In this video, finally sorting out Ellie's kingpins. Uh, it's time to say goodbye to the wobble and uh, get this steering working properly. Uh, so, um, yeah, plan is get the suspension arms off. Um, my mate Rick has um, an amazing garage full of stuff. So we're either going to repair these arms because we reckon the hole has opened up too much or just fit new arms. So we'll see how the day evolves. Stage one will be to remove all the front bodywork so we can get at the um, suspension arms. Things are progressing somewhat, so we're getting the front end apart. We've already got one axle arm off, and it's this one. And uh, unfortunately, that's one very knackered wheel bearing. Get you in for a super close up on that noise. That's not good. So, um, fortunately, uh, um, we, we have quite a stock of arms, which we unloaded from a van this morning. So, hopefully there's one that will work there, because the original plan was to try and tighten up the, um, the pin housing. So the kingpin goes through the hub here, and through the arm, but the hole in the arm gets opened up with wear over the years. So it flops about all over the place. I mean, you can see the movement. It is not um, inconsiderable. So um, yeah, that's not good times. Um, hopefully the other wheel bearing is better. But um, yeah, if I take you in on this side, you see the size of the arm bearings. They are massively over-engineered, um, really. Consider what the piddly little arm bearings are like on the back of a BX or a C5. Um, these monsters are um, much better. So yeah, track rods off, um, suspension arms off, we can now um, try and sort it out so we actually have kingpins that don't have play in. Rick's just bravely tackling the passenger side now, which re requires exhaust removal to allow better access. Ah, important marking of the tie rods, the suspension tie rods, so you know where to set them. Now, I've covered those in a previous video. Now, you can see Rick's mark there, so he knows he needs to screw the tie rod down to there because that's the push rod connects to the suspension tubes. Um, replacing those crusty suspension cans is on the to-do list for another day. Um, I think we've got enough to worry about today. And um, Crazy is playing in the background by Seal. That's perfectly apt. But we shall keep on. We haven't got much time, so I haven't been able to do a step-by-step -step guide to this job. Um, so apologies to Ben, who I think was hoping I would do that. On top of that, we're also just doing a basic service. We've um, genuine Citroen filters because um, frankly she deserves that after her three and a half thousand mile epic trip around Europe but this should utterly transform the way she drives I'm looking forward to this so this is the um, passenger arm which we think may be salvageable we might get away with a new pin so out comes the grease nipple and it's the welch plug on the end uh, it needs to be unscrewed and then we can we <laughs> can um, smack the pin out which is the fun bit, but I think most of my 2CV chums want to see who've never done a kingpin themselves before. So here, Rick is just um, tapping up um, the edges of this bottom plug because they're hammered down into flats to lock it into place. There we go. That's experience, that is, I think. If I was trying to do that, I'd be there for about 20 minutes. That's why we use specialists for some jobs. With the bottom plug uh, now um, Bing. out, uh, Rick can use his old um, cylinder head stud to knock out the bottom plug from the other end of the kingpin housing. Uh, so that's been poked out and uh, that part of the job is now done. Uh, now we can start getting the drifts out to really start smacking things about a bit. So um, yeah, noise alert. Now we can drift away. Good. But yeah, this pin's only lasted a few years because someone doesn't grease enough.
Good to have a drift for every occasion. And comes the pin. There we go. Hub is separated. Yeah, I probably don't grease the kingpins quite as often as I should. I've been getting better lately, but too little, too late. Is that actually the wear ridge on it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can see the wear ridge on the end of it up here. Or you could if it could focus. There we go. That is a worn pin. It doesn't take much. Well, we had a look at two of her arms, but um, they were even worse. So the plan now is to try and um, lay some weld on it to tighten this hole up, which I've never seen done before. So this will be interesting because at the moment the pin is just moving too freely in there. It's tight right in the middle of the arm but not at either extreme end which is not ideal I, I blame the owner not greasing enough and hooning too much all right we're going to break out the welder and try and put a ring or at least some weld on the extreme end where the play is and hopefully that will um, shrink the eye enough for the pin to be a nice snug fit now some people do vertical lines okay so Probably some people say, oh, he's doing it all wrong, he doesn't know what he's doing. Oh, that's the joy of the internet, that's just the joy of comments. Mm. Right, I shall look away with my eyes. I'm not wearing a shield. What, I shall avert my eyes? Say done away in a little big man. Mm hmm. No, it's fine. And cardboard makes a surprisingly good um, shield against sparks. Grand. Now we leave it to cool. Well, hopefully the pin will be a nice tight fit. How many people look at your videos? Uh, quite a lot. A thousand? Uh, I've got 40, 46,000 subscribers at the moment. The latest video which I posted yesterday has just hit 20,000 views. Sorry, posted Sunday. It's just hit 20,000 views. On a 2CV, a job on a 2CV? No, that was fitting a rear wiper to a city rover. <laughs> 20,000? You're joking. It's madness. Ah, yes, now I see it. So that's knocking out the tab washer at the top with the skinny drift. We're just assessing the driver's side arm to see how knackered it is. Where's that from? Uh, cylinder head rocker? So yeah, that, that's what came out of the block on the engine I was meant to be driving to Croatia in. Which is why I know what they look like. And perfect for the job. It's almost as if Citroen designed it that way. Well, it's a nice tight fit in something. Now 
now we can grab a new kingpin and see what the fit is like. That doesn't seem desperately loose. Right. Yeah, not bad. So we can save that one with weld as well. Don't really need weld, is it? You think that's tight enough? Mm. Excellent. What we have got this side is a completely knackered wheel bearing though, but we have other hubs floating around, so that shouldn't be too big an issue. Blimey. That is a right mess, that end. Is that all the hardened surface broken away? So yeah, that's why we got the waggle going on. Not a happy kingpin. It's all right, we have brand new kingpins. Compare and contrast. So, before welding, wash all the grease away with petrol to make less fire. Here, Rick is fitting new bushes to the hub. And the pin sits in bushes on the hub, uh, which stops the hub wearing out. And uh, here we go, it's noises up. And the other bush, look at some expert holding by me there, perfect. Rick's just cleaning up the shims here. Uh, you see they're going that little carrier, that bright object there. Uh, the shims set the height, so... Um, they ensure that you get a nice bit of um, a nice tight fit on the vertical plane. Um, so we're just fitting the arm here, just giving it a trial fit, just to see if it will go home there and then feel nice and snug. But yes, I'm very, very glad I'm not attempting this job myself. This is why we use specialists, and Rick Pembro is definitely one of the ultimate when it comes to two CDs. just got a one pin down the bottom just holding everything together and is about to start smacking the pin down from the top that's the new king pin going in so he's cleaning up his drift and um, there will be more noise allow you to set it to just the right depth to make sure you can get the mm. wash plug back in. Bottom plug. Bottom plug, sorry. The interesting is that put quite a resistance, reasonable resistance, and it got easier. Mm. Which is a bit annoying. What can I actually do? I've removed the sound from this clip, but the new bottom plugs, the slot is a different size. So Rick's trying to use all manner of different things to try and get these new plugs in. You, you can probably buy a special tool, but why should you need to? It should not be necessary. Sadly, in this case, it very much is. The final step is to tap the plug around just to make sure it's a nice tight fit. And then you can start battering down the edges. Um, Rick finds if you give it a few taps with a hammer, you can then knock it around a little bit more before peening over the edges. Peening, that was the word I was looking for earlier. Yes, peening. Oh, it's a good word. Once that bottom plug is in, you then knock over the edges to stop it unscrewing. And three snipples back in. And, um, yeah, 
the horrible play is gone. It looks like Rick's setting up for a magic trick here, but what he's got underneath that ball is a, a welch plug, which will go in the top of the arm. And um, he's just going to set about battering it with a hammer. Because, um, yeah, it needs to be just a little more dished. I guess that socket's had a lot of abuse over the years. What mill's that one? 17. 17 mil socket. Half inch. Just cleans up the seat, doesn't it? Mm. As you can see, this is a job which requires a certain amount of violence. Um, not only does the um, plug need hammering in like this, which flattens it out and so seals the end of the kingpin housing, uh, Rick will next stake it by um, sort of chiseling in all around the, the circumference. Uh, he's just gone looking for a chisel, I suspect. Look at that, I'm showing it off, I'm so proud of the work I haven't done. And uh, here comes the chisel for the next bit. And um, yeah, this again just helps prevent uh, the plug escaping, it traps it in the hole. How's that for an engineering term? We then decided that the um, arm bearing on this side was uh, in very poor condition. Um, it wasn't very poor, but it wasn't brilliant. And while we're in here, we might as well do it. So here Rick is just um, knocking out uh, the inner race. Um, we, we, we found on both arms, the inner was slightly worse than the outer. Uh, so at least we've got new arm bearings. All should be good. Um, out pops the bottom race. Or guide or channel. I don't really know what I'm talking about. Have you noticed? So we're just getting to the finishing stages on the second arm. Um, so should hopefully be good times and all sorted. We may remember when we visited Cambridge 2CV before we went to Croatia. My track rod adjusters were a rather terrible state, being polite. Um, so. We're fitting some new ones, these race spec, because race car. Um, track rod adjusters from Burton 2CV, our friends in the Netherlands. And um, yeah, should work a lot better. Make it easier to adjust the tracking. Um, Will at Cambridge 2CV adjusted the tracking before we went. I'm pleased to say that the wear problem seemed to have gone away with the tyres, so we did a good job with that, but we're gonna have to reset it again because we've had all this apart. Um, so, um, fun times. This job is trying to turn into one of those jobs. Uh, we're struggling to get the adjuster onto this track rod end because the thread on the track rod not in great condition. Give it some extra wire wheel action. So we can confirm that wire drills uh, or wire brushes in drills, great attachments. That seems to have done the trick. That's all working again. Hooray! So hopefully we can now get this arm back on this car. It'll grease the enormous arm bearings. The knife edge is rotate out now. Yeah, they're brand new in the front. Rears weren't worn. 
Well, we're starting to get there. Look, there is a wheel back on. Uh, the other side is just being finished off by Rick, so hopefully then we can set the tracking and uh, start reassembly. Um, it's been a long day. It's currently 20 to 5. We aren't meant to still be here, but it's nice to know this sort of stuff doesn't just happen to me, although it is still my car, so maybe it's because of me. But um, nonetheless, um, just further proof that um, nice, quick, simple jobs often don't exist. Now, having got it all back together again, we've got to redo the um, alignment, uh, which we are going for with the bit of string method. Um, so we can see with the string tight on the sidewall at the front of the wheel, it's not touching at the back, there is a gap. And uh, that's good because this is front wheel drive. So you apparently want a bit of um, tow out. But it's just getting it just right. But our new Burton adjusters make it very easy to adjust the tracking. Uh, I assume that once it's been set, you then tighten up these two lock nuts to stop it moving about. Sort of like so. Best shadow ever. There we go. So before it was a slightly extreme toe out. Now it's just very slightly, which is about where we want it. And now the lock nuts can be indeed locked. And then we can start putting some bodywork back on. And there we go, it's half past five and uh, hopefully that's job done. Uh, but now we must launch a rescue mission for a broken Diane. So um, life is never quite as simple. Um, and still need to go back to Wales tonight. Um, it could be a long night. I'm not going to leave the gimbal in there, that's a really bad idea. Why is that in the toolbox? Um, but we'll get packed up, um, go and rescue a Diane, and um, hopefully all will be well. Just had a brief interlude while we um, toast started this Diane with a Zara Picasso. Uh, it conked out for reasons unknown. It's now running beautifully, so we'll drive it back. Right, no chance to set the mic up. We are driving back to Wales, 176 miles from Somerset to my house. The sun is feverishly bright. Uh, we rescued a Diane, uh, tow started it, all fine. Uh, now we're just um, pushing on to get back home. Long way to go, gonna have to stop for dinner fairly soon before I get going. But the steering feels much, much better. We also did an oil change, uh, reset the valve clearances, and um, adjusted up the handbrake. So she's much better. And um, yeah, long way to go. Wales achieved, and isn't it beautiful? I love twilight. Bendy Geddy. Wells for fantastic. So there you go, that was the story of how um, Ellie had new kingpins. Um, what I will say is it is possible to fit kingpins without removing the suspension arms. Rick Pembro prefers to. Um, so yeah, F thanks Rick, I'm, I'm very grateful for that work, still awaiting the invoice. I'm sure it'll arrive and terrify me at some point. Um, but um, yeah, uh, she's now much, much better. There's still a bit of a knock, which I think is coming from one of the dampers actually. I think the casing is rattling around on it a bit. But um, yeah, no more rattling on bends. You can drive over bad terrain. It doesn't feel like the front end of the car is going to fall off. So we can say she is now much, much better. So there you go. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Don't worry, there will be a video on the E32 that's lurking here. It's going back this weekend. Uh, I've just been borrowing it to do a long-term test. So there'll be more on that soon. And uh, more on this car and all the others. So I should say, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe before you go. And I shall see you in a future video. 
Farewell. <laughs>